I believe it was Prince who encouraged the world to party like it's 1999, so when the year actually rolled around, we can only assume that developers had taken this advice to heart on account of all the garbage games from that year that could only have been okayed for release by someone who had had one too many bucks fizzes at a New Year's Eve party. Of course, it wasn't all bad. Gamers were treated to the likes of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, System Shock 2, and Silent Hill, which each garnered a stellar critical response. Where there is good, however, there must also be the downright awful. And we're back to shine a light on the most horrible games of 1999. We've trawled through the murkiest depths of game rankings to bring you the absolute worst of the worst. The rules are the same as our previous Worst Games of X Year videos, in that a game must have had at least seven reviews in order to qualify. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 worst games of 1999. 99. Number 10. Rushdown, PlayStation, 42.36%. We imagine there's a rule written somewhere within the ancient tones of game development that says if you're going to create a game about extreme sports, it really does need to actually be exciting. Clearly, Canal Plus Multimedia and EA didn't get this memo, because if there's a game that would be a good cure for insomnia, it's their 1999 title, Rushdown. Receiving a dismal average of just 42.36% on game rankings, Rushdown Rushdown was criticised above all else for just not being fun to play, which for a game consisting of snowboarding, kayaking, and mountain biking is, well, a big no-no, to be honest. It was compared unfavourably to Sony's 1995 effort ESPN Extreme Games, which may not have been as technologically advanced in the graphics department, but it had a heck of a lot more excitement on offer for the players. Not only did everyone find Rushdown to be about as interesting as an afternoon at the post office, but the graphics were lacklustre, bringing nothing new to the table, the controls were clunky, and the sound, made up of raspy effects and repetitive music, was downright irritating. Just be glad that you didn't rush down to the shops to buy a copy. Unless you did, in which case, well, I'm sorry. Number 9. South Park Chef's Love Shack, PlayStation, 41.95%. First of all, we're going to need to try not to think too hard about the fact that the prize, in very heavy air quotes, for winning Chef's Love Shack is a romantic weekend with the eponymous cook, and that it's being played by eight-year-olds. But now that we've all gotten over the repugnance that is the basic premise of the game, we can go on to explore all of the other ways that South Park Chef's Love Shack is just awful. Clearly positioning itself as Mario Party for South Park fans, Chef's Love Shack is a quiz game with minigames peppered in to keep things lively. The trouble is, though, all of the questions are kind of weird, straddling the line between insultingly dumb and ridiculously obscure, and the minigames, whilst fine to play, are plagued with horribly long load times. But then again, so's the rest of the game. Not only was the whole thing pretty atrocious, but it basically forced you to play it with other people, thus spreading its abhorrence to all of your mates. There is a single player mode, but there's no AI, so if you play alone, you win no matter what brilliant. Sadly, not only is Chef's Love Shack not the worst title on this list, it's not even the worst South Park title on this list. I'm sure you know what's coming, but we'll get to it in a moment either way, don't you worry. Number 8. Boss Rally PC, 41.87%. One of the many problems with entering the racing game arena is that the market is already so saturated you're really going to have to push the envelope in order for your game to stand out. Unfortunately, Boss Game Studios did no such thing with Boss Rally, which was essentially a port of the N64 title Top Gear Rally. No, not that one. Oh, damn it! 
while the latter garnered reasonable reviews, Boss Rally was received unfavorably by most critics, despite adding additional features such as more cars and tracks and a multiplayer mode. The vast majority of critics panned the game for being too generic and offering nothing that other racing titles at the time didn't. This had nothing to do with the fictitious courses or lack of authentic vehicles, but came down to the game consisting of little more than pick car, race, win. It also suffered from some technical problems, with the controls being clunky at best, meaning that players struggled to get the cars to go where they wanted. Bit of an issue in a driving game. The AI also might as well not have even been there. I suppose Boss Rally poses an important philosophical question. Is it better to have lofty ambitions and fail, or to not even try in the first place? Answers on a postcard, please. Number 7. South Park, PlayStation, 41.22% I told you we hadn't seen the last of everyone's favorite foul-mouthed cartoon pre-teens. Indeed, as awful as South Park Chef's Love Shack was, South Park colon the video game somehow managed to be slightly worse. As a comet approaches the Earth, strange creatures besiege South Park, and it's up to Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny to take up arms and defend the town. In theory, this doesn't sound like a terrible premise. However, the execution was completely completely bungled from start to finish. Oddly, one of the things that critics were most negative about was the voice acting, which is bizarre because the characters were voiced by the same actors who appear on the show. Players found the character's speech to be repetitive, with each one only having a handful of quips and voice lines that soon became old. Other criticism was leveled at South Park's graphics, which were not great even at the time, and the fact that although there were a few laughs to be had initially, the handful of good jokes that there were couldn't mask the fact that the game game was a fairly generic shooter, and a poorly thought out one at that. Oh my god! They killed South Park! You- Number 6. Ring. The Legend of the Nibelungen. Sure. PC, 40.38%. Over the years, we've seen video games based on movies, TV shows, and even books, but it's rare to see a game that's based on an opera. I imagine the crossover in the video game lovers versus opera lovers Venn diagram is pretty small, but I admire the attempt. Based on Wagner's opera Der Ring des Nibelungen, though taking some severe artistic liberties in the process, Ring the Legend of the Nibelungen is set around the 40th century, by which time what remains of humanity has been enslaved by an alien race, and it's up to protagonist ISH, or Ish if you want to get serious about this, to save his people. Like I say, severe artistic license. Though some reviewers praised Ring's graphics, most were highly critical of the game's puzzles, which they found to be confusing and nonsensical, and were mostly solved through trial and error rather than actual brain power. They also hated the game's story, which was again critiqued for being confusing and nonsensical. It also garnered negativity for its art style, which players just felt was bland, doing nothing to endear the game to them. And the same goes for the characters, who most found to be badly acted, incoherent messes. And needless to say, the phrase Richard Wagner will be rolling over in his grave was also thrown about once or twice. Oh, ouch. Number 5, and your guess is as good as mine here, 3 Extreme. PlayStation, 40.38%. Okay, let's just take a moment to figure out how to pronounce this one. Threx stream, Threx stream, three X stream. I don't know. Whatever it's called, it's not very good. The video game, formerly known as the second sequel to ESPN Extreme Games, is a racing title in which players must skateboard, rollerblade, or BMX their way to victory. Rather than just beating your opponents to the designated finish line, however, the idea is to do tricks on your chosen transportation method in order to score points, which can later be used for upgrades. Grades. The problem that most people had with the game, however, is that it was basically a repackaged version of the first ESPN Extreme Games sequel, 2 Extreme. I suppose that answers the pronunciation question, even going as far to repurpose many of the courses. It was also criticized for being dull, owing to the fact that the vast majority of the game was just downhill races with a couple of obstacles thrown in for a bit of variety. In short, not very extreme at all. 
It was so unmemorable, in fact, that the best thing the Wikipedia article can find to say about it is that the characters are composed of polygons, which, whilst true, really isn't all that impressive for the PlayStation 1. Number 4. Harley Davidson Race Across America PC 36.94% one would assume that anything with a Harley Davidson label slapped on it would probably be at least a little bit cool and, if nothing else, be somewhat fun. Well, you know what happens when we assume things? That's right, we look like bloody buffoons. As one could probably infer from the title alone, Harley Davidson Race Across America requires players to race a variety of Harley Davidson motorcycles across the United States, with the end goal being to reach the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally in South Dakota. Sadly, the game failed to capture any of the actual thrills of racing motorbikes in real life, and rather than allowing players to zoom along tracks in a carefree manner, it makes them stop every couple of minutes to fill up on gas. Oh yeah, classic racing game trope. Now, if they really wanted to include this in the game, it at least could have been an opportunity for some fun mini-games in which you get into fist fights at a rival biker gang's bar or something. But no, no, you've, you've just got to sit there and watch the tank fill up. Add into the mix poorly designed menus, sloppy controls, and a lack of ability to pause the game, and all you're left with is a broken down mess that even Green Flag wouldn't be able to get back on the road. Number 3. NFL Quarterback Club 2000 Sega Dreamcast 28.63% Amongst many other problems, NFL Quarterback Club 2000 for the Dreamcast had the misfortune of releasing shortly after the critically acclaimed NFL 2K, which was basically lauded by everyone as a shining example of how to do an American football game right. It seems that for every uh, slam dunk that NFL 2K made, is that, did I, did I do that right? NFL Quarterback Club 2000 just well, pooped its pants. At its core, the game was kind of broken, with its central mechanic, the catch button, not really working as it should have done, making each match more of an endeavour of luck than one of skill. It wasn't just the controls that were inept, though. The AI was as well. Critics complained that not only did they struggle to catch the ball, but their teammates did as well. This would be fine if it weren't the one thing you need to be able to do competently in order to succeed at American football. Aside from this, NFL Quarterback Club 2000 also suffered from old reliable issues like frame rate drops, poor sound design, and generally sloppy controls. Trust us when we say that if you're aching to play a retro football game from the turn of the century, just stick with NFL 2K. It'll cause you far less pain. Number 2. Superman The New Superman Adventures Nintendo 64 22.9% I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit shocked that Superman 64 didn't take the top spot on this list. However, as it turns out, according to game rankings at least, it's a whole 2.57% better than the worst game of 1999. There's little wonder we assumed it was going to be the worst of the worst, though, with the title having gone down as one of the most terrible video games in history, often ranked alongside the likes of Ride to Hell Retribution and E.T. The Extraterrestrial, the latter of which almost killed the games industry as a whole. But I digress. Although it was received fairly well by the small children it was marketed to, there are a number of things that make Superman 64 one of the most awful games ever made. The graphics are absolutely laughable, with the majority of Superman's surroundings obscured by fog that the developers insist is a narrative device, a la Silent Hill, and not just a poor attempt to disguise the obscenely short draw distance. Even if you can get past the crappy visual design though, the game suffers from poor unresponsive controls, numerous bugs and glitches, a typo on the back of the box, Oh, I just can't wait to play the new Superman adventures! And repetitive level design. And no, I am not talking about the rings again, I just, I can't do it anymore. And number one, Skydive PC, 20.33%. 
We'd make some comment about how the name Skydive, or, well, there's an exclamation mark actually, let me start again. We'd make some comment about how the name Skydive is rather apt for this game, considering it plummeted into obscurity swiftly following its release. However, that might seem like we're grasping at low-hanging fruit. Not only does Skydive somehow manage to be worse than one of the worst games of all time, scraping a dismal 20.33% on game rankings, but it also collected a GameSpot award for being the worst game of the year. The idea of the thing is to guide your squishy little skydiver to his or her designated landing spot, with points awarded for accuracy. Or, alternatively, you can pick a mode in which you must fly through rings. Oh wait, what? Oh, hello darkness, my old friend! Somehow, Skydive managed to hit every crap game beat going. The controls were awful, which for a game that requires only a mouse to play is really quite an achievement, the graphics were shambolic, and most of all, it just wasn't fun to play. The only praise that any reviewer was able to give the game was for including Ride of the Valkyries in its soundtrack, though they also noted that its inclusion in such a plopper's game probably had Richard Wagner turning in his grave. Wait, hang on, haven't we heard that somewhere before? Oh, oh, just leave Wagner out of your rubbish games! He's done nothing to deserve this!